I need you to remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Colonel Clydelia Pritchard Allen and the invocation which will be given by Chaplain Harry Bird. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Or oh, the land of the free and the home of the Let us pray. Lord God, I thank you for your presence with us today in this ceremony of the Pentagon Force Protection Agency as we pause to honor the service, steadfastness, and courage of those who serve every day to keep us safe. Lord, we do not wish for danger to come but we thank you that when danger did, was at the door, that because of the training, the teamwork, the presence of mind, and the decisive action of those that are recognized today, they were able to preserve the health, the life, and the safety of those who work here. Lord, I thank you for the men and women who step forward to protect and to care for others. May they and their loved ones know that their faithfulness and courage does not go unnoticed and we are grateful for what they do every day. In your name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. It is my honor to introduce our official party. First, the Performance Improvement Officer and the Director of Administration and Management, Ms. Jennifer Walsh. Our director for the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, Mr. Chris Bargery. And the chief of police for the Pentagon Police Department, Chief Woodrow Cousset. At approximately 1038 on Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021, an unknown assailant exited a bus at the Pentagon Transit Facility and immediately, without provocation, brutally assaulted Corporal George Gonzalez with a knife, severely wounding him. 
Eventually, the assailant took the officer's weapon and began firing the weapon, actively engaging responding officers on the Metro bus platform. Police officers of the Pentagon Police Directorate, our Special Operations Branch, the Emergency Response Team, and our canine units responded to a shots fired call that came across the Pentagon Police radio network. Further radio traffic conveyed, we had an officer down and the assailant was down. Members of these units arrived on the upper bus platform, located the downed officer and assailant. They quickly subdued the suspect and immediately provided medical aid to both the suspect and to our downed officer. In addition, officers secured the area, protected civilians on the platform, and guided personnel to safety away from harm's way. The acts and sacrifices of the officers responding ensured the threat to the Pentagon and the public was neutralized. Their actions to go above and beyond are a testament to their dedication to the tenants of the Pentagon Reservation and are keeping with the highest standards of the Pentagon Force Protection Agency. We gather here today to recognize these police officers by presenting several awards. The PFPA Mission Excellence Award, the Office of the Secretary of Defense Award for Excellence, and the Office of the Secretary of Defense Medal for Valor. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Chief of Police Woodrow Cousset. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I was once asked during an interview panel, what makes a good police force? And without thinking, my initial response was simply, spirit. I was thinking the Pentagon police. I know that surprised the panel members, and I'm sure they're expecting a much more traditional uh, response, like compliance with standards and policies, professionalism. And we do have those things, absolutely. But I went on to explain that to me, the true measure of our police department is found in our police officers. Our greatest strength is in our people and in their spirit, in their morale, and their moral code. It's how well they treat members of the community that, that we serve and how police officers respond when others are in need. Day to day, you can hear it in the positive banter between our officers, supervisors, and command staff. You can see it in the mutual respect through tens of thousands of daily contacts that our force has with the public that we serve. And when someone's in trouble, you can feel it in how quickly our officers rush to their aid. Today we're honoring our exemplary police officers who on August 3rd, 2021, ran to the sounds of gunfire or responded without hesitation to those radio calls that none of us want to hear. Shots fired and later officer down. Tragically, Corporal George Gonzalez was taken from us that day, but our police officers showed valor in the face of gunfire. Others performed life-saving efforts under the threat of active violence in a hot zone, and others served to lead the on-scene response, establish command and control, and crime scene management and investigation. Recalling the words on the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Wall, it's not how these officers died that made them heroes, it's how they lived. And our officers that are with us here today, being honored today, emphasize, epitomize that lifestyle. They truly distinguish themselves, stopping the threat, protecting innocent bystanders, and ensuring public safety. They are amongst the best in our ranks, and we're proud to serve with them. Their actions remind us of the risk we all face when we uphold our pledge. Their actions bolstered our spirit as we protect those who protect our nation. Thank you. Recipients, please take your places. Mr. Bargery, please join Chief Cusay on the stage. The 
The Pentagon Force Protection Agency Mission Excellence is being presented to the following officers for their excellence and support to the Pentagon Force Protection Agency on August 3rd, 2021, surrounding the act of violence incident at the Pentagon Metro platform. Responding to a shots fire call that came across the Pentagon Police Network, and without regard to their own safety, they proceeded to secure the area, protect civilians, and guide personnel to safety. Their actions and sacrifices assisted ensuring the threat to the Pentagon and its tenants was neutralized. Their actions and commitment to the mission reflect great credit upon themselves and the Pentagon Force Protection Agency. Signed, Chris Bargery, Director, Pentagon Force Protection Agency. Officer Richard Branch, Jr. Sergeant Anthony Brett. <laughs> Officer Lance Cole. Officer Evan Davis. <laughs> Officer Philip Hannibut. Captain Nicole Harrington. <clears throat> Officer Brian Janik. Officer Sean Lambert. <laughs> Officer Daniel Mosley. Officer David Ratliff. <laughs> Officer Vera Vega. Former Pentagon police officer and now PFPA employee, Ms. Nicole Willick. The 
The Office of the Secretary of Defense Award for Excellence is our next award. The following officers are recognized for their actions surrounding the August 3rd, 2021 Act of Violence incident. The officers rendered medical care to the down PFP officer and to the assailant while still in a hostile environment. Their courage, quick response, and assistance is in keeping with the highest standards with the Pentagon Force Protection Agency and reflect great credit upon themselves and the Department of Defense. Officer Mark Burmeister. Lieutenant Henry Powers. <clears throat> Officer Jonathan Rubach. Major Scott Wayne. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, for these next two, I have two separate citations to reach, so please hold your applause. Officer Derek Jacobs. Officer Jacobs is recognized for his actions surrounding the August 3rd, 2021 act of violence incident. His swift response, courage and actions providing overwatch security for fellow officers while they provided medical aid to the downed PFP officer and assailant was noteworthy. His actions were in keeping with the highest standards within the Pentagon Force Protection Agency and reflect great credit upon himself and the Department of Defense. Deputy Chief of the FBI and former Pentagon Police Major Michael Ramsey. Major Ramsey is recognized for his actions surrounding the August 3rd, 2021 Act of Violence incident. His quick response and leadership in setting up incident command and establishing a security perimeter and identified a warm zone for responding medical assets. His actions are keeping with the highest standards within the Pentagon Force Protection Agency and reflect great credit upon himself and the Department of Defense. Thank you, Mr. Bardry, Chief Cusay. Ladies and gentlemen, the Performance Improvement Officer and the Director of Administration and Management, Ms. Jennifer Walsh. Good morning. Oh, that was really nice. Thank you. <laughs> I'm honored truly to be invited to join you, the incredible Pentagon Force Protection Agency team. It's an important day today, and what an occasion, both solemn and celebratory, to recognize the service rendered as a security situation unfolded and turned to tragedy, a very personal tragedy for this family our family. On that early August day three years ago, many of you stepped in to do what you do so well. And this entire community stepped up in the hours, 
days and now years after to continue that excellence in service. I am in awe of what the PFPA community does. You stand in front, on the sides, and behind the scenes, and especially our Pentagon Police Force. You engage with all sides of human behavior, the good, the bad, and the worst sides. And you continue to show up to model the best sides of the human condition, compassion, consideration, empathy, problem solving. On behalf of the Office of the Secretary of Defense, the Pentagon Reservation Community, and the Department of Defense, thank you. Thank you for your work, for showing up for the good days, and continuing to show up on the days after the bad ones. The OSD Medal for Valor is a result of your courage, your bravery, and your heroic actions from September 11th, 2001. This medal recognizes heroic first responders who rushed forward into a burning Pentagon of uncertainty to save lives. The Medal for Valor was presented initially to 17 members of the Defense Protective Service, PFPA's predecessor organization, and 22 employees of the Washington Headquarters Services. And since 9-11, 18 Pentagon police officers have received this award, the highest civilian award for valor. Many of those first responder inaugural recipients remain in our ranks. And as we bestow this award today, we remember all of the prior recipients and we honor those now joining this Medal for Valor team. As Chief Cousset reminds us, we also remember Corporal George Gonzalez, his service and his sacrifice not to be forgotten. I will close with just one final thank you for your important work and to say, I and we, this larger community and family, do not take you for granted. I am honored to serve alongside of you and to be a part of today's ceremony solemn and celebratory. Thank you for letting me join you today. Mr. Bargery, would you please join Ms. Walsh on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the following presentations. Officer Thomas C. Brown. Attention to orders. The Office of the Secretary of Defense has awarded the Secretary of Defense Medal for Valor to Officer Thomas C. Brown III. Officer Thomas C. Brown III, Police Officer, 5th Platoon, Pentagon Police Division, Pentagon Force Protection Agency, is recognized for selfless courage, bravery, and heroism he displayed at the Pentagon Transit Facility on the morning of August 3rd, 2021. Though initial reports indicated a potential presence of a second hostile shooter, Officer Brown responded to the scene and with total disregard for his own safety, he bravely identified the assailant and immediately engaged the hostile shooter returning fire to disrupt the assailant until he was neutralized. Officer Brown assessed the situation and immediately proceeded to provide medical aid to downed officer George Gonzalez. With the voluntary risk to his personal safety, Officer Brown rendered medical aid until emergency medical personnel arrived. His heroic actions enabled other PFPA officers to secure the area and most importantly, protect Pentagon employees and pedestrians on the bus platform. The courage displayed by Officer Brown reflects great credit upon himself, the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, and the Department of Defense. Signed, Jennifer C. Walsh, Performance Improvement Officer and Director of Administrative and Management.
Officer Jorge A. Gonzalez, Jr. The Office of the Secretary of Defense has awarded the Secretary of Defense Medal for Valor to Officer Jorge A. Gonzalez, Jr. Officer Gonzalez, Police Officer, Emergency Response Team, Pentagon Police Division, Pentagon Force Protection Agency, is recognized for the selfless courage and heroism he displayed at the Pentagon Transit Facility on the morning of August 3, 2021. Officer Gonzalez immediately responded to the scene and without disregard for his own safety, he identified civilian personnel on the bus platform in harm's way, provided cover, and directed them to safety as the search for a potential second hostile shooter transpired. Officer Gonzalez then provided security in a defensive position looking for additional threats, while officers provided medical aid to the assailant and to the downed PFPA officer. His heroic actions securing the scene allowed law enforcement and emergency medical services personnel to respond. The courage displayed by Officer Gonzalez reflects great credit upon himself, the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, and the Department of Defense. Signed, Jennifer C. Walsh, Performance Improvement Officer and Director of Administrative and Management. Officer Christian N. Sapanara. The Office of the Secretary of Defense has awarded the Secretary of Defense Medal for our Valor to Officer Christian N. Sapanara. Officer Christian Sapanara, Police Officer, 5th Platoon, Pentagon Police Division, Pentagon Force Protection Agency, is recognized for the selfless courage bravery, and heroism he displayed at the Pentagon Transit Facility on the morning of August 3rd, 2021. Officer Sopranara immediately responded to the bus platform, identified civilian personnel in harm's way, provided cover, and directed them to safety. He then provided overwatch security in a defensive position looking for additional threats, while Pentagon police officers provided medical aid to the assailant and the downed PFPA officer. His efforts played a critical role in securing the scene for other law enforcement and emergency medical services personnel to respond. The courage displayed by Officer Sapanara reflects great credit upon himself, the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, and the Department of Defense. Signed, Jennifer C. Walsh, Performance Improvement Officer and Director of Administration and Management. Special Agent and former Pentagon Police Officer Christopher L. Jeffers. The Office of the Secretary of Defense has awarded the Secretary of Defense Medal for Valor to Officer Christopher L. Jeffers. Officer Jeffers, Police Officer, Emergency Response Team, Pentagon Police Division, Pentagon Force Protection Agency is recognized for the selfless courage and heroism he displayed at the Pentagon Transit Facility on the morning of August 3, 2021. Officer Jeffers responded to the scene and upon arriving at the upper bus platform, he located down PFPA officer George Gonzalez and immediately began providing medical aid, addressing his severe injuries and wounds until the bus platform area was rendered safe and emergency medical personnel were cleared to arrive. 
Without regard for his own safety, Officer Jeffers, utilizing his training and leadership to assist his fellow officers to address the critical injuries and utilize advanced life-saving techniques. His heroic achievements played a critical role protecting fellow police officers, Pentagon employees, and pedestrians on the bus platform. The courage displayed by Officer Jeffers reflects great credit upon himself, Pentagon Force Protection Agency, and the Department of Defense. Signed, Jennifer C. Walsh, Performance Improvement Officer and Director of Administration and Management. Corporal Ashton T. Davis. The Office of the Secretary of Defense has awarded the Secretary of Defense Medal for Valor to Corporal Ashton T. Davis. Corporal Davis, police officer, 1st Platoon, Pentagon Police Division, Pentagon Force Protection Agency is recognized for demonstrating exceptional leadership, selfless courage and heroism displayed at the Pentagon Transit Facility on the morning of August 3, 2021. Without provocation, a hostile assailant attacked and mortally wounded a Pentagon Force Protection Agency officer on that harrowing morning. Officer Davis, without hesitation, rendered medical aid to the mortally wounded assailant, treating injuries to his torso, which included a gunshot wound to the chest cavity and the right forearm. Officer Davis continued to provide first aid as the hunt for a possible second shooter progressed and the transit facility was secured and rendered safe for medical personnel to arrive on scene. His brave actions served as an example to other police officers responding to the scene and members of 1st Platoon. The courage displayed by Officer Davis reflects great credit upon himself, the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, and the Department of Defense. Signed, Jennifer C. Walsh. Performance Improvement Officer and Director of Administration and Management. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Thank you, Ms. Walsh. Thank you, Mr. Bargery. We have one final award. Sergeant Kyle Murdoch cannot be with us today, but we will read his citation. The Office of the Secretary of Defense has awarded the Secretary of Defense Medal for Valor to Sergeant Kyle Murdoch. Sergeant Murdoch, police officer, Special Operations K-9 Division, Pentagon Police Department, Pentagon Force Protection Agency is recognized for heroic leadership and selfless service in connection with the unprovoked attack and mortal wounding of a fellow police officer, Corporal George Gonzalez, that occurred at the Pentagon Transit Facility on the morning of August 3rd, 2021. With total disregard for his own safety, Sergeant Murdoch bravely led members of the emergency response team to an active threat scene and reports of a second shooter. He then took command of other PFEA police division personnel and immediately rendered medical aid to the injured personnel. He immediately applied pressure dressings, tourniquets, and applied stop the bleed techniques to a hostile assailant. His bravery and professionalism played a critical role in ensuring the threat was neutralized and key to securing the secure for medical personnel to respond and provide aid. The courage displayed by Sergeant Murdoch reflects great credit upon himself, the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, and the Department of Defense. Signed, Jennifer C. Walsh, Performance Improvement Officer and Director of Administration and Management. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Director of the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, Mr. Chris Bargery. Good morning. 
So thank you all for being here today. Uh, as Ms. Walsh said, a, uh, a solemn uh, but uh, celebratory time. Um, we have, um, it's been a long time coming and uh, we've been diligent in doing our homework uh, to put these together, uh, allowing the case to uh, finalize and, uh, and to get the information we needed before we moved forward with awards. Um, Super proud to be here, and I want to thank you all for being here. Ms. Walsh, thank you so very much. Uh, Mr. Ahmed, Ms. Miners, thank you for being here. Uh, our, um, Mr. Salasis, uh, Tara Jones, thank you for being here today. We were so glad to have you. And uh, a special thank you to uh, General Retired and uh, previous Director John Kofer, who's here with us today. Sir, thank you. It's good to have you back as family. So. 37 seconds, 37 seconds. We heard the story today of 37 seconds and the chain reaction of events that followed in the hours, days, weeks, months, all the way up to now. 37 seconds, 16 shots uh, in a gunfire exchange on the busiest metro platform, the busiest transit platform in the National Capital Region. And in an instant, a what was a normal sunny Tuesday was, Tuesday morning was transformed into a chaotic scene with life and death consequences. Uh, a vicious ambush that we've heard about today and an intense hand-to-hand -hand encounter. Uh, and uh, I will always speak up for Corporal uh, George Gonzalez because uh, Corporal George Gonzalez uh, fought back and he used the techniques that we trained perfectly, perfectly uh, to wound the assailant. He actually, actually the assailant uh, was mortally wounded but just had not stopped yet. But I will always speak up for uh, George in that respect, uh, just to be clear <laughs> about what transpired up there. But uh, uh, an intense hand-to-hand -hand encounter followed by a rapid response and gunfire exchange that we've heard about today, um, <clears throat> and a determined active threat assailant, uh, all on a bus platform out there that we all know so well, um, with people moving about. Uh, one uh, of the uh, people on the platform actually was, had a minor wound, uh, but uh, had been actually hit with a fragment during that exchange, which uh, was part of what was driving the questions of, do we have a second shooter? Is there, a, is there a, uh, another shooter on the reservation? But that's how fast things can change. Uh, I think Ms. Walsh did, his, uh, did it justice today when she talked about uh, our officers out on the front line and our officers that are encountering people, in, whether it be a traffic stop, and that is across our enterprise. Uh, today's focus is on the Metro bus platform outside the Pentagon, but across our entire enter enterprise from Raven Rock and across the NCR at all the many locations that we uh, where we operate. As Chief Kusay often says, the threat's not hypothetical, it's real, and we prepare for it every day. <clears throat> the spectrum of threats that we look at are broad. Uh, they range from nation states, uh, state actors, to terrorist organizations, to domestic extremists, to criminal organizations, to radicalized lone actors, to emotionally disturbed persons, and more. But the Pentagon Force Protection Agency is prepared. Uh, and we are engineered to prevail. Uh, thoughtfully designed in a post 9-11 framework, we are a unique, mission-built, constantly evolving task force uh, that can and does meet and defeat threats, large and small, human actors or biological pandemic we don't differentiate. And it takes a whole agency, every single corner and every single employee doing their job 
to prepare for a moment of truth like the one that we've analyzed so thoroughly today. And every element from recruiting to training to the technology that we bring to the specialist capabilities, the engineering, the command and control, the list of the administration, the list goes on and on. Everything is brought to bear and tested in 37 seconds, just like that. The good thing is we have master craftsmen in all corners of the agency that build us, that shape our people, that make us prepared in all corners. And we've got protégés coming up right behind them. Uh, that is the beauty of our agency. And I thank you all for what you do to prepare us for 37 seconds like that. Yesterday, Chief Cousset and Corey Walton uh, and um, um, who, was, who else was with us? Chief? And Jay Day. We were all out at Sheltonham uh, Training Center, uh, thanks to our folks, our partners from DHS. We were all out at Sheltonham Training Center watching the latest class of police officers come through training out there through PFPA's training. Uh, and we saw them practicing techniques some that you heard up here today. Um, and we, we were able to talk to them and see that happening. And our excellent instructors are pouring into them to prepare them for the realities that they might face. I'm only the fifth director of the Pentagon Force Protection Agency. We're still young. Uh, and each director before me has nurtured these capabilities, has nurtured and evolved us uh, and, and made us well prepared as well. And we are made to plug in and we are made to partner and all of those things matter on mornings like that and in the days to come. But in the end, we succeed because of our people. And I think Chief Kuse brought that home this morning. Uh, we have smart, strong, and a courageous team. We have great people. We're made up of dedicated individuals, like the ones that we brought forward up here today. I'm humbled and I'm honored to serve alongside you guys, every one of you, every day. I've thoroughly studied every report and every second of video footage from that day. I know it, very, I know it well. Um, in the face of danger, your absence of indecision, your strength of mind and courage, and your boldness in the moment were all apparent and commendable. Thank you. Uh, you worked furiously, furiously to save the wounded. Never stopped. Didn't matter how long it took. Everybody was in there, hands on. Training showed through and the stamina needed to continue to process that whole event. Uh, you displayed it all. Thank you all. Thank you to the families that are here today. Thank you for the service you provide our nation, the service you provide your communities in loving and nurturing and caring for these men and women. Uh, it matters so much. And thank you for what you do for your country. Really matters. To face evil and defeat our enemies, you have to have people in society who can match their capacity for violence. Gentlemen and gentle women with self-control who can analyze, be calm, assess, and apply the training and the escalation of force necessary for the situation. Small to large. And it's a rare cross-section of our society that can do that, that volunteers to do that, and that steps up to do it every day. Every day you put that gear on, every day you put your weapon on, the badge, you know it. It's the responsibility that you carry, and you do it well. Thank you. You know, there's a saying that diplomacy works in a room full of diplomats. 
Um, and I don't say that with a, a tongue in cheek. Um, and violent people sometimes become diplomatic once you've matched their level of rage. Uh, that is something we know well. We know that to be true. Uh, thank you to all the patriots in this room, not just from PFPA, but to everyone in this room because you make the Defense Department run. And that is what our Department of Defense does. And we need you. And thank you to the partners that were with us on that day and that are with us every day. All of you who, again, shaped that 37 seconds for us. Thank you. You matter. Thanks for being here with us today, guys, and thank you for supporting the agency and our noble mission of protecting those who protect our nation. Uh, we value you. Have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Bargery. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please remain at your seats until the official party has departed. Thank you for joining us today.